Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. The Bell 505 Jet Ranger is doing well hot and high. The giant strato launch aircraft could fly next year. Blasting a small drone out of the sky may not be a good idea. I'm Brie Cross, it is August 6, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. As Bell Helicopter gets back into the business of producing a light single-engine helicopter, their Bell 505 Jet Ranger X is approaching the end of the high and hot flight testing in Arizona and Colorado, according to the company. It's reported that, according to Bell 505 program manager David Smith, the aircraft has accumulated over 275 flight hours since its first flight test in November of last year. Smith reportedly said that the flight tests in those two states have been some of the most challenging in the program, but it has gone so well that it could be concluded as much as a month early. The reports indicated that Smith said a second test aircraft is set to begin load development testing this week. Work is also progressing on the Lafayette, Louisiana manufacturing facility that will reportedly be capable of producing up to 200 aircraft per year. The giant strato launch aircraft, the brainchild of Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen, and several partners, including SpaceX's Elon Musk, could fly as early as next year, according to the company. It's reported that the company is hoping to build a viable satellite launch business using the gargantuan six-engine airplane. The wingspan of the strato launch airplane will be 385 feet, which is about 123 feet more than an Airbus A380. It will require a runway of 12,000 for takeoff. However, in a recent development, it is reported that Strato Launch Systems has parted ways with Orbital ATK, which would have been the primary satellite launch vehicle carried under the airplane. Now the company is evaluating as many as 70 different launch boosters. While that shift won't delay a first flight of the aircraft, it's reported it could push back their schedule for launching their first satellite into orbit. Also now on the back burner are plans to use Strato Launch as a platform for manned spaceflight. It's reported the Sierra Nevada Space Systems Corporation has explored the possibility of launching their Dream Chaser manned spacecraft using the Orbital ATK booster. After the break, is it open season on small drones? There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website, or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Once again, it's been proven that when there's a contest between a small drone and a shotgun, the drone loses. However, so does that person who pulled the trigger. In the most recent case of Neighbor vs. Neighbor involving a UAV, William Meredith of Bullitt County, Kentucky has been arrested for blasting his neighbor's quadcopter out of the sky with a shotgun. According to television station WDRB in Louisville, Kentucky, Meredith said that the aircraft was hovering low over his property where his kids were outside, so he got a shotgun and opened fire. Things got a little more tense when the drone operator and some friends confronted Meredith about the shootdown. According to the report, Meredith met him with a pistol and said, quote, If you cross my sidewalk, there's going to be another shooting, end quote. Meredith was arrested and taken to jail for wanton endangerment, first degree, and criminal mischief. Hillview, Kentucky police told the station that it is illegal to discharge a firearm in the city. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update. However, today our report is not about a member of the Aero Community, it's about the Aero Community itself. 
The Aero community is part of what we call our Airborne Partnership Initiative. The Airborne Partnership Initiative is a plan developed by ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to build a synergistic energy-wise aviation aerospace news program. The aim is to grow this program to include a significant portion, if not a majority, of the aviation world's pivotal organizations, interests, and viewpoints. However, to make this happen, we at ANN can't do it alone, and that's where the word partnership comes into play. Our intent is to make this a collaborative effort by choosing to partner with the best and brightest among aviation's organizations, communities, and other pivotal entities. By doing this, Airborne Unlimited can help to build a bigger, better, more comprehensive audience for all things aviation and also start to make a dent in getting solid aviation news and information produced in formats and venues where it has not had the greatest exposure outside of the aviation spectrum. By working together in a partnership, we can offer a united front to the rest of the world, aviation and non-aviation alike, which will yield a more organized and professional view of aviation to all those viewing it through the auspice of Airborne Unlimited. The Aero community members we present every Thursday in our Airborne Unlimited program are the heart of the Airborne Partnership Initiative. After these messages, Bert Rattan chooses a true blue battery. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Now certified, Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip with integral backup battery safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. True Blue Power announced the company's custom integrated lithium-ion battery modules developed in partnership with Regan Designs, will power a unique aircraft. Burt Rattan has selected a Blue Power battery for use in his most recent project, the recreationally versatile Ski Goal. The FAA has proposed civil penalties against three companies for allegedly violating hazardous materials regulations. The Sherwin-Williams Company and Rock Water Energy Solutions got hit for $63,000 each, and a $54,000 fine was levied against XKIM LLC. Airbus has received a U.S. patent on what it calls an ultra-rapid air vehicle. The design would be propelled by a system of turbojets, ramjets, and a rocket motor. The patent says it would go near vertical on takeoff and cruise at over Mach 4. Avjet Routing Flight Support and UAERO are set to launch China's first attempt to circumnavigate the globe using a piston-engine-powered airplane. The planned 49 legs in a DA-42 aircraft is expected to take three months. Well, that's our trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. While we're still waiting for definitive regulations on the operating of commercial small drones, at least the FAA has stepped up the issuance of operating exemptions. They have now granted more than 1,000 Section 333 exemption approvals. Many of the grants the FAA has issued allow aerial filming for uses such as motion picture production, precision agriculture, and real estate photography. The agency also has issued grants for new and novel approaches to inspecting power distribution towers and wiring, railroad infrastructure, and bridges. To address the demand for Section 333 authorizations, the FAA says they have recently streamlined the process to make it easier for operators to access the nation's airspace. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time, 24-7 coverage. 
of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.